So as we can see, we have a we have a node here in Canvas, which means that some hosts got compromised. So at this point, the first thing that we actually want to do is to know which account is exactly uh, behind the process that was compromised. And we can see that we have a victim user, uh, which is clearly unprivileged in this case. So. Unless we perform some kind of privilege escalation, there are not too many things that we can do with this user. Um, and this is uh, where you can start looking for a um, local exploit to, uh, to get root access or these kind of things. Or uh, you can start looking for uh, um, um, privilege escalation on the network. And to do that, you can, for example, uh, look for uh, Kerberos tickets. So uh, using the search interface, you can locate the uh, Kerberos module. You click on it. And basically what this module is going to do is that it's going to scan on the box and see if there are some kind of tickets um, available. And if there are, it will tell you where to find them. So in this case, there is one actually but uh, we are out of luck at this point because we cannot read them. So probably what it means is that we are not the one, I mean, victim is not the user who actually um, got these credentials. So we'll have a look at it. Okay. Sorry about that. And uh, yes. This uh, credentials actually belong to uh, a user, uh, which happened to be Dave. Uh, so this guy owns the credentials and because of the rights, at this point, we are not able to treat this file. Now we are going to use Spectre to actually change that. So we're going to use the Spectre module and retrieve the file eventually if we are lucky enough. So the Spectre module is very simple. You just have to specify the file that you want to leak. Uh, by the way, there are a couple of restrictions, restrictions uh, coming with this, uh, with this module and I explain them um, as the module is, uh, is running because it's gonna take some time. And then you can specify some, some size, uh, 4096 being the maximum. So let's just keep that value. The exploit will take care of uh, the correct value itself. All right. So the exploit was pushed, uploaded. By the exploit, I mean the underlying binary. Um, on which the uh, exploit relies. And if the binary is successful, we should soon start to see some, some packets uh, um, coming from the binary. And this is exactly what we have. So in this case, we can see that we have some addresses leaked. Um, and at this point, you have to know that uh, when an address is, is actually leaked, uh, it means that the um, uh, the address is actually uh, is actually one hundred percent sure uh, certified. Like um, it would it would not uh, give back an address that is uh, potentially wrong. So we know that when we get that that the exploit is actually starting to work. And uh, what's interesting is that we can see that uh, one packet is uh, beginning with this uh, extreme. And uh, 0504 is actually the header of uh, Kerberos tickets. So clearly at this point, uh, the module is, uh, is working and it's starting to, uh, to leak the whole ticket out of the uh, kernel memory. Now, uh, I said that I would um, mention the restrictions associated with, uh, with this exploit. So one first restriction that is important to, uh, to notice is that uh, the exploit is currently limited to files um, 
whose size is lower than uh, 4096 bytes. The reason is because uh, we did not fully implement the algorithm that we uh, that we developed for these exploits, and as a result, we are only looking for a specific single pages, or should I say, for files that fit within a single pages, within the single page. Um, it could easily be updated, and we might do it in the future, uh, depending on our. Uh, the time that we have to do so uh, to actually handle uh, arbitrary size file uh, at this point is not a it's not a problem at all among the other restrictions that we have um, another one is that uh, if you're not running uh, Fedora you need to have a kernel that is supported by the underlying binary so if you have Fedora, what happens is that you will be able to um, to leak symbol through the um, slash proc slash call sims interface. Um, but if you do not, uh, such as when you are running CentOS on, or Ubuntu, you need to have these symbols. Please note that at this point uh, KSLR is not a problem because we uh, we handle it. Uh, although I should say that um, it's quite imperfect uh, from a testing point of view on VMware, we uh, sometimes have uh, wrong results. But contrary to um, uh, classic uh, kernel local privilege escalation, it's not a problem in this case because uh, you won't crash anything, right? Uh, in the worst case, you won't have any results. And um, well, that's still, uh, still okay. Um, another limitation that we have uh, is that it seems to be working decently well with uh, with a few processors and, and kernels, but for some reason, some kernel and some hardware are not uh, supported, like uh, the attack is not working at all. So we are not exactly sure of what happens uh, in each case, it could be... Um, one problem or another or even the combination of both um, but when it works and when your kernel is actually supported you um, get some pretty uh, interesting results all right so as we can see um, the exploit is fairly slow um, probably it comes from the fact that the CPU is not that recent. And indeed, we can see that the CPU is actually uh, an i5 in this case, um, which is not that bad actually, but uh, not that fast either. Also, um, the underlying binary when, it, when running standalone is actually faster than when it's running um, underneath the uh, whole uh, canvas framework uh, because of the whole uh, packet uh, uh, sending and receiving thing. Um, so for example, to give you a um, couple of uh, examples, I, I think that the, um, the exploit is able to leak uh, the entire uh, uh, the entire shadow on an i7 on within 10 sec uh, no, uh, 30 seconds or something like that, while it will take maybe one minute or two uh, 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 with the, um, uh, when running under canvas. Uh, again, uh, because you have some uh, uh, additional uh, 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 processing. Um, if you want to, uh, to see if uh, what's leaked as a as some kind of sense you uh, can have a look at the, the bytes that are returned and for example in this case You can recognize ASCII. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna try with Python To see if these strings actually make any sense And it does actually. So clearly, we are leaking the the correct thing. 
because they are um, KR uh, BTGT is actually the uh, service, uh, the Windows service uh, running the um, the whole uh, camera thing. Um, one point that is important to, uh, to precise, uh, by design this exploit is extremely inefficient with uh, bytes whose value is actually zero. This means that, for example, this line will be leaked or was leaked uh, much faster than, than this one. Actually, this one is basically the worst because in this case we cannot detect the zero, therefore uh, if we cannot detect the specific value of a byte, we have to assume that it's zero. Um, so when the exploit is, uh, is completed, which is the case uh, here, uh, you automatically have uh, the tickets uh, stored uh, within the file, this one, okay, a temporary one uh, within your exploit directory. And uh, the exploit will actually try to automatically detect if it's a Kerberos ticket. In this case, uh, it is, and the underlying Canvas API is actually uh, parsing the, the whole ticket um, and printing you some, some nice information. So if you just wanted to, uh, to have a look at the, um, at the whole uh, ticket, uh, the row ticket, you wouldn't be able to, to see this information. You really have to, uh, to parse it uh, correctly to do that, especially when it comes to, um, to timestamps. So we can see that, uh, uh, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, we have a couple of time. Uh, we can still uh, use uh, this ticket uh, before it's reused. Uh, or before it's expired, I should say. Uh, so let's try to do that. And to do that, we are going to use PSExec. So, by the way, uh, these tickets is actually an administrator ticket on this domain, emu5.lab. So, first thing you want to do is to actually uh, know where this, uh, oh, where this uh, DC is. So, okay, you add an additional host. Then you can run your PS exec. So this is the host that you're trying to attack. Administrator, okay, password, we don't need that. Domain emu5.lab. All right, as for the uh, Kerberos credentials, uh, uh, we had them already here. Yeah. All right. Try that. X. Uh, this value or this one is doesn't make any difference. Both can be run under Windows 2008 anyway. And let's try to see if it works. And it does. A system shell on the DC. 